Okay, so I'm trying to print out the P51D from 3D Labs, um, just looking at the wingtips alone. So there are so many files you can import um, in order to kind of get near to the mark. Um, but to be honest, they're just not ideal, um, especially if you're using something like Cura. All right, so there is a wingtip in your file and uh, you can kind of come down to the settings profile manage profile and i think it's under settings here sorry profiles rather here and you can import them <coughs> excuse me uh, my advice is you probably need to make your own and learn from some of the settings in here there's a few videos out there as well on explaining the Cura settings uh, because 3D Labs tend to prefer Prusa printers and Simplify 3D uh, and Simplify 3D isn't free it's $149 and Prusa printers are in the high end $600 to $700 or above I think I think a kit Prusa 3 is about 699 sterling so anyway, I've, I've kind of messed around with some of these settings um, and I've got close to what I think are the right settings. Um, however, you know, what you will notice, or you can use your right mouse, uh, right mouse here, click, and then just use it to pivot around the actual objects that you're scanning. What I have noticed about the 3D lab stuff is there are what I would call artifacts or faults in a way. These are the ribs on the inside and you can see this bleeding that comes through and that physically does come through on the printer. And they argue through their support that you need Simplify 3D in order to put additional layers over here over the mesh to to make up for those deficiencies because this is not a single shell all right now a proper design would be a single shell but because the way that they design their well let's face it their stuff is excellent and, it, and it's a good price but because the way they design this stuff um you will find what i would call bugs or gaps in the mesh if you want to move around the object with a mouse, uh, again, hold the shift key down and then use your left mouse button to move around. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and here you can see a bit of a breakup in the mesh. It gives you a good idea. Again, use the right mouse to look around. So these are the, you can see the ribs here and then you can zoom in. Again, use your shift key left well i'll try that again shift key left mouse above the object zoom in again you can see and i'm pretty certain this will print out exactly as you see it so don't worry thinking this is a slicer issue or a printer issue it isn't it is the way that these are layered they are effectively a layering technique they're using in order to get the shapes you know they want uh, you also notice that the top layer um, may come out, depending on how it prints um, with these concentric, again depends on which infill you've got um, on here, but that's about as good as I can get it. You'll also notice that inside there are kind of lines. Well, you can't stop that because the way the head's moving around across here and it's, you know, obviously um doing its extrusion you will get um edges however if you use a bit of z hop in here and zeb all z hop is doing is picking up the head and moving it slightly as it moves on between the diff different places you'll see it kind of avoids any whiskers that that end up drifting between these different elements these ribs for example where it's jumping between them if you hop up slightly on the z-axis that's what z-hop is 
if you jump up just a little bit about is it 0 0.75 a millimeter and then it jumps because it will it, it will also retracts you have to enable retraction as well and what that means is that it pulls back on the actual um, PLA filament slightly and the extraction is quite critical on non bowden systems it's quite low which means the filaments passing through or not passing through a bowden tube but on bowden bowden based systems which is effectively a nylon tube or a ptfe tube um, to pull if you pull back slightly then what it's doing is it's pulling the filament away from the reservoir or the hot end and that stops oozing and again if you've got z hop enable and you've got a bit of uh, retract enable then that uh, removes a lot of these whiskers between the objects but you have to play around with this um, and there are formulas for calculating how much ex how much um, retraction that you do and I suppose the values in the Z hop some of it's just by practice and other bits really are by doing calculations you can see what looks like there might be a little you know gap there as well I think I don't know let's have a look at that yeah maybe on the other side I can't really see if that's yeah there may be something in there I'll have to anyway we'll see when that prints out uh, in terms of all of the settings so I have gone and used the any file um, these are the standard settings you have loads of videos on this stuff but the layer height is 0.25 the wall thickness 0.4 a wall line count is one uh, because you're going to have a top thickness on this one because it's a tip typically you probably have two maybe it depends on how thick you want the top to be you might want to put two three four layers in there i think it comes in the ini file with five uh, so put mine down to about two again the top and bottom thickness 0.4 which is a nodal width effectively uh, temperature it's up to you where you put it um, sometimes I see people using anything between 200 and 230 Celsius my printer which is the Anycubic i3 Mega S uh, tends to be fairly happy around 200 the build plate temperature uh, 3d labs seem to play around with 230 for the head and 70 for the for the um, for the build plate temperature and typical enable retraction enable retraction distance of 0.7 retraction speed 40. the print speed is variable according to how good your printer is it seems if you slow it down you get slightly better quality prints but then it takes longer so this is 50 millimeters per second in terms of the overall print speed all right um, other things you need to set combing must be off i have enabled z hop retracted just to do some tests because um, I tend to get a few whiskers um, in between the spot in between these ribs rather so I'm going to try Z hop this time but 3d labs seem to turn it off maybe just the way that the printer is set up print cooling should generally be turned off or you can play around with this depending on you know the results I do some tests you know to figure it out generate support I've switched off it seems in the ini file it's switched on um, but there is no requiring this particular component to add additional support uh, because it's just a vert it's coming vertically up um, and it's got a bit of a a skirt on here as well and providing you've got good bed adhesion so either you're printing on glass and you've got a good lacquer um, and it needs to be a good lacquer not just a, a cheap one um, if you're lucky to find a cheap one that's an extra strong hold that's great but most people are buying proper 3d printing lacquer um, what other settings have got in there the mesh fixes these must be all switched off including that value must be set to zero okay that's important to set that to zero otherwise you will get mesh problems um, what else is in there special mode um, that should be service mode set to normal experimental you should have slicing tolerance I'm pretty certain that's set to middle I usually have the build plate build plate adhesion set to skirt 
although in some cases you might want to set brim if you want to add a bit additional support so I think they're the main settings you need to play with um, obviously if you're printing the main wings you don't require a top and bottom layer or in this case um, a top layer because this one has got a top layer meaning the tip has a top if I don't add a top then there will be a hole at the very top of the, of the tip um, so and this is all kind of documented in the in the video so what you want to do is play around with these settings you may want to print some smaller test pieces to start with you can always scale these down and print test pieces and um, other things you might want to check if you've got these Bowden based systems especially on the uh, the um, Anycubic S3 or i3 uh, Mega S is you might want to untie wrap the Bowden cable from the power cables because the higher up the X axis it goes it tends to cramp up up against the A-frame top so if you separate out the Bowden uh, from the cable and use a rubber band or something to pull it away and then watch it as it comes up the Z frame uh, so it doesn't bunch up underneath the top of the A frame or top of the yeah, it's an A frame or Z frame then that might help the overall quality we noticed that we were getting bubbles and various other artifacts at the tail end and as soon as we uh, sort of cleared up the path of the Bowden that seemed to improve the overall flow as well so all, it all really depends on your type of printer uh, that you're going for and then you might want to then create your own custom uh, Cura INI file as well and just play around with the settings until you feel confident that you understand them all but there are there are plenty of videos up there that kind of go into it a little bit fast sometimes they're in different languages the 3d lab ones there is no English to them and um, they're using the old Cura they're using a 1.5 uh, which is ancient and it's not really applicable to 4.21 uh, that's out there today but these are some of the ones I've, I've found I'll do another one for the wing another video for the wing uh, as I'm getting slightly better at this we're fairly new to this my son and I started printing a, a few weeks ago we've already printed the 3d uh, labs uh, easy max uh, 001 sort of gl powered glider and we got fairly good results with that in the end uh, but it, it it's it's a bit of a black art to get the wall thickness right the strength right uh, and there is lots of videos on 3d labs showing you about strength um, up there as well in fact if I just see if I can find there's a very good video which has been done there's some these are the ones for the p51 Mustang uh, but there are some really good videos up there um, let me see if I can find one for you I'll go and grab my history and there's lots of stuff up on their um, website as well I think you'll find uh, 3d labs have a decent website with a good forum uh, so I'd recommend that you really go through uh, their content up there because it isn't easy to get this to uh, to work the way you want it right I think it's possibly this one somewhere up here I'm not sure yeah, this guy this guy um, has done a very good job of explaining all the settings that you need um, so this is CNC kitchen I'd recommend that you look at his stuff uh, because he does uh, detail this to get I mean this is beautiful printing it's really clean there are no artifacts no whiskers in order to do this he's got his bill plate temperature right his head temperature right his flow rate his speed um, he's got this set up perfectly and he's printing this about 
50 millimeters per second uh, but he, he's got a good PLA as well so he's got a really high quality PLA and PLA there's various qualities of it so to get it to this kind of almost translucency without any artifacts pretty much whatsoever does take quite a lot of time so I'd recommend looking at CNC Kitchen and how to print your RC plane because he does cover off on both tweaking the g-codes manually editing the files and then also the cure stuff plus it, co it covers all the ins and outs of you know putting the plane together using Sinar Acrylate and this accelerator and you know making sure everything's square and if they're not how you would compensate for if you've got any uh, issues with the prints where they've pulled away slightly and how you can get around that or improve the print quality. So this guy I'd highly recommend because he does a good job of explaining all the ins and outs. All right, best of luck guys.